your life. Okay, everyone, I hope you can watch us. We're live now. If you can see us and you can hear me, make sure that you type out your name in the comment section below. We'll wait for a few seconds before we get started with uh, today's Facebook Live agenda, which is about how do you have effective partnerships. Uh, so, yeah, it's quite uh, like the three of us are so cramped. Like, it's trying to turn it into the same screen. Yeah, trying to put it into the same screen. Partnership problems, you see. The, web, the Facebook Live itself has started with partnership conflicts. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, make sure that you, you type in the comment your name. Uh, and which city you're from so that we know who's there and we give you a quick shout out while you're here live and once we have a decent enough fraction of people on the Facebook live uh, we will get started yeah are we even live? Uh, yeah we are live we have a few people joining us yeah <coughs> okay. type out your name in the comments I don't read any comments are we live? we are okay Pawan says we are live. Twelve of you who are live right now, type your name out. Come on. Be Type nice. things in the comment section yeah. so you'll know who you are. Okay. Awesome. Hello Sujit. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining in. Who else have we got? Deepak. Hi Deepak. Hi Dilbrukshan Fernando from Sri Lanka. Nice to see you. Hello, Praveen. Nice to see you. Yeah, we are we are such a distance yeah. on the screen to accommodate the three of us today. So please don't mind. My eagle eyes to be yeah. happy. Yeah. I was to see it. <laughs> Hi, Sushil. Nice to have you here. Sender. Okay. Hi, Miss Bari. Miss Bari. Hi. That's Raju. Yes, that's Raju. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Hey, Milan. All right. So we have one people joining us now. Ah. Okay, so the topic for today's Facebook Live is about how do you build effective partnership relationships in business. So I want to get started by firstly telling you that uh, through my childhood I was told that start a business but never do business in partnerships. Um, and I kind of proved that wrong because the notion that the I was conditioned with was that partnership businesses don't work, people cheat you, you can't trust people, you have like, uh, a lot of conflicts, so that's why you should not do business in partnerships. Having said that, I can safely say that it's working quite okay for us. What do you guys think? It's really easy. Yeah, it's, yeah. Working. Yeah. Yeah, it's, like, okay. <laughs> it's working for the three of us. So we thought let's do a Facebook Live and uh, share with you what are the things that are working for us, uh, what are kind of the pillars or principles around with we evolved and built our partnership and then we will answer a few questions for those of you who have business partners uh, you can ask us questions later don't type your questions right now in the comments because it will get lost in the comments but we will open up for questions in this Facebook live uh, and give you our perspective on how do you deal with different challenges when it comes to building a partnership business so I'm going to quickly toss the ball to Karan Karan what do you think is the the, the key essence of an effective partnership business so uh, my perspective of probably the most important essence of a partnership business and I'm going to start with the problem and the mistake which most partners make is that they choose partners based on who they are. So they look out for people who are like them or people whom they have already existing relationships with their friends, their family members and that becomes their parameter of choosing a partner. Or colleagues at the workplace. At colleagues at the workplace yeah. because I see this in a lot of IT companies honestly. You have two people, you know, having a lot of strengths together, using doing, you know, basically working on the same project and they decide let's start a business. Yeah. But I tell you what, as a result of that, one thing for sure is that there is no distinction in what you're bringing on the table. So here's the key essence of a partnership business. Are your partners do your partners have complementary strengths, complementary personalities, complementary energy and are they complementary people? Which means that every single partner needs to be different. I mean, it's common sense according to me. As a partnership business, everybody needs to bring something on the table. And what they're bringing on the table is needs to be distinct. If not, it really leads to a lot of challenges about who's really taking care of the business because at the end of the day, there's no accountability. So yeah, that's my biggest sense. Are you complimentary? Not just in skills, but even as personality. Because I can talk to the three of us. 
if you've interacted with us before, we are very, very different people. Like Rajiv McCordy is the dreamer. He's the guy who's extremely intense about where we want to go. He and he goes all over the place about when it comes to the future, and then he brings it into a consolidated format. And then between the three of us, I'm the guy who actually is the detail guy. I'm the guy who figures out how do we get there, and I bring structure into the entire team so that we have a method, we have a process, and we have a clear strategy of how to get there. And Pranav is the guy who eventually makes it happen. He is the guy who, on the floor, on the ground, gets it done because he is the guy who is the external guy. He is the guy who actually networks. He is the guy who brings in the magic to what we do. And we, you heard us saying this before that as individual people, we are pretty useless in what we do. But when we come together, it's the trinity. This trinity is created because we are complementary in nature. What do you think, Pranav? Yeah, absolutely. I think the 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 factor about complementary skills really, really goes a long way. And uh, whatever Karan was saying about two friends coming together, two colleagues coming together, two uh, two people working in the same project coming together, big mistake, guys, big mistake. And then think about it. Fundamentally, why would you need a partner? You would need a partner to add to what you already have, which means that you need a partner who is able to add an extra dimension to the skills that you are bringing onto the table. If two people are bringing the same skill onto the table, then that's that counts for nothing. Yeah. Right? So essentially, a partner has to fill the gaps. Absolutely. Okay, because for a business to move forward, you have multiple forces that have to work. Yeah. Somebody has to be the creator of the products or the services. Somebody has to be the networker and the person who's actually making sure that the product or service reaches the market. Somebody has to be the team builder and making sure that the the team has get is getting the right input and the right energy and the right mentoring. So I think complementary skills is something that. The three of us Absolutely. totally subscribe or prescribe to a lot of businesses that we work with, saying that you and your co-founders or your partners have to have different capabilities, and 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 that's why uh, the, if if some of you have interacted with either Rajiv or Karan or me uh, in the past, you always hear us saying this multiple times that as individuals we're nothing, but when we come together as a group of three people is when the magic happens, which means that's how we're filling in the complementary skills and strengths. Now, having said that. Uh, what also does not work if two people in the same partnership have the same set of skills is the ability to be able to resolve conflict. Because think about it, amongst the amongst the three of us, I I don't think it lasted more than three or four days without a disagreement. Yeah. Without a conflict. Yeah. I so mean, I want to say that out loud. We people believe that you know everything is on Kidori and uh, all of us are on the same page. I want to tell you the truth, guys. We rarely start off by being on the same page. We go through a process by getting on the to get on the same page. And absolutely, I think it's important for us to share the process yeah. with uh, with everybody for the benefit of everybody who has either partners. And think about it. This is not just about you being in a partnership business, but it's also about any relationship that you have with people around you. It could be your employees. It could be your business partners. It could be people at at, at your family. And uh, I can't stress the amount of importance this will have, especially if you're in a family business. Oh, okay, that is a Pandora's box in itself. <laughs> <laughs> because family business, the, the the fundamental reason why people are partners in a family business is because they are in the fam same family, right? So the complementary skills goes out of the window. What is it that you're bringing onto the table goes out of the window. The only thing that's common is the same blood, and uh, I don't think that counts for two people to be in the same partnership in a family business. However, having said that, if you're already a family business, if you're two people from the same family working on the same business, then the most critical thing to do is: Are you developing your skills, which are complementary to each other, which can add value to the business and enhance the ability of the business to grow beyond the both of you, or three or four of you? Right? Some family businesses have eight or nine people. Now, which is great if all the eight or nine people are bringing on skills which are unique to each other. Now, going back to the conversation about conflict, uh, like I said, and like all of us, uh, all of us are saying that we fight a lot, we argue a lot, we disagree a lot, but there is a fundamental premise to all of our discussions. And the premise is that when we are disagreeing, the disagreement is about the idea and not about each other. Which means that in a disagreement, I don't hate Rajiv or I don't agree with Rajiv. But I do not not. A lot of times that happens. <laughs> okay, there are some some inner emotions coming out. But that's how it is. Look, we're trying to be real. 
we are not going to say that everything is hunky dory between us. It never is and never will be. I think the three of us have come to a conclusion that it never is going to be the case that all of us are on the same page. I would rather put it saying it yeah. shouldn't be. I, uh, yeah. I think uh, one of the things that stands out for us is that, like Pranav said, our disagreements are on ideas. It's passionate conflict. It's productive conflict. It keeps our standards high. Yeah. Because if we end up agreeing to everything that each one has to say, then it's, it's like giving a yes man to yeah, each other. Just, just pleasing each other. Yeah. Say, no. yeah. Uh, no, based on what you just said, Rati, if, if anybody outside were to look at us in a meeting, they would actually think we are fighting. So when Rati was talking about passion and emotion, that passion and emotion is channelized towards ideas and discussions. It's not personal attacks on each other, which means the emotion is there. I mean, yeah. you can't have a conflict with an emotion, but it's not personal. Right? Yeah, and I think this is where we've seen, because we coach so many teams, is that we've seen co-founders or partners when they are having a challenge with each other on a particular situation instead of talking about the situation they're talking about the person yeah. they're talking about the personality the remarks like he always is like this he does not understand or uh, he does not do what it takes so that becomes a personal attack versus saying that hey this is something we're facing a challenge with and this is where he needs support so i think one thing we've become very clear about over a period of time is that we love to disagree. Yeah. Uh, we love to have passionate conflict on ideas. Yeah. And we love to do it with a lot of respect for each other. Yeah. So, so there's, here's the question to ask and probably you can even do this with, with your partners. When you walk out of a conversation which has an idea, does that impact the relationship you share? What I can say about the three of us, it doesn't change the way we look at each other or relate to each other after a, after a meeting. Yeah. There's no residual effect. Yeah, because the, the conflict was never about each other. The conflict was, was about each other's ideas. And it's absolutely okay to have a conflict about each other's ideas. So uh, let me share this with you. I think there was one question on the in the comment section also. Uh, Rajan asked this question, for fighting with each other, what kind of rules you follow? Oh yeah. Very well, interesting question. And uh, uh, we have a we have a very very strong foundational set of rules that we all always follow. I, I would rephrase fighting to conflict because we're not literally fighting with each other. But <laughs> so I tell you what, uh, in every relationship and extremely important in a partnership relationship, uh, there is a rule of expressions that we always follow. And and if you want to make a note of it, then make a note of it. We first discuss discuss each other's ideas. So let's say the three of us are sitting down together to discuss a decision that has to be made, which currently none of us are on the same page. So we're bringing different perspectives to the same table. So the first set, the, the first rule is to firstly discuss everything that is in here, put it out onto the table, share your perspective, share your your your, your reasons for the for, for for your conversation, the reasons why your your idea should be considered. And all of us discuss and all of us discuss with absolutely no filters. So we are sharing everything that's in here. Right? Now and we do that respectfully, right? So the first step is to discuss and the second step, which I think is the most critical step, is to debate. Debate on the pros and the cons of each of the ideas. What can work in our favor, what cannot work in our favor. Now, here, another fundamental premise in every partnership is every idea's benefit or every idea's pro should be the organizational's benefit. It can't be a personal benefit. So I like my idea because it does good to me may not necessarily do good to a Rajiv or a Karan is, is wrong premise in a partnership in itself. So it always has to be organization first, the mission first, the dream first. So every idea that I'm sharing has to have that as a foundational premise. So discuss the idea, debate the idea with the premise as to what is in the larger interest of the organization and then make a decision. And again, when we're debating, we're debating respectfully. So, so I have a add-on angle to that, especially in the lower debate. So usually when people debate, they have this perception that debating is constantly about me proving my case and you proving your case. So who's right or who's wrong? Yeah. There's never an, an end to it because in my head I'm right and in your head you're right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So the key is to challenge each other's perspective to find out why do you feel that you're right and why do I feel that I'm right. So that there's a clear decision. It needs to lead to a decision. Yeah. I don't want people to misunderstand what we're saying as debate is about you sitting in a courtroom and trying to prove your case. It's about you showing how can really benefit so that there's a logical
for making decisions because ultimately that can only be solved when you make a decision because that's the third step. Right. You discuss, you debate, and then you decide because that decision is crucial for us to move the conversation forward. Yeah, because I, one of the other things that I've seen is I think there are three key elements over here. The, the discussion bit is about expressing everything. One key rule we have amongst each other is we are never going to keep not just an idea but even a concern within ourselves that it, it has to be put out. So expression is very important because if you do not express that, that kind of builds in your head and that turns into poison and then you are reacting to the, the, the build up you've created in your head not really what has happened on the outside. Yeah. So expression is why discussion is important uh, and then understanding each other's perspective is why debating is important. And then to be able to move forward, that's why decision making is important. And a lot of people leave conversations hanging for months and years because they don't have the courage to arrive to a decision. I think that's the key word. Yeah. Yeah. They, they lack the courage because they, they're just trying to get everybody on the same page. And between us, we know for a fact that there will never be a time that everybody will be on the same page. So once we, once we go into the decision making mode, we literally take a vote. And if there is, say, both of them are on the same page about an idea and I disagree to it, then I will disagree and commit to it. Which means I will say, okay guys, I disagree to the approach we are taking, but I commit to taking action because we have made this decision. Absolutely. So there is no such thought process that later saying, see I told you, see I knew this will not work out. I think when, we, when the moment of making a decision and then the minority disagreeing and committing is, is very, very powerful and very, very rare because most people don't get it. They just want things their way. And that's where partnership businesses fail. When you make it about you, like Pranav rightly said, for us it's not about us individually, it's about the goal, it's about the, 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 the dreams we have or the mission we carry for our business. So I think fundamentally it's these four beats of communication that Pranav beautifully put out. Yeah, so, so let me, let me yeah. reinstate it again uh, for you. Discuss, debate respectfully, make a decision to decide, and then the fourth one is to disagree and commit with absolutely no residue. No residue and I've, I've seen sometimes this happen. So if there are three people in a conversation, if I don't agree with what you guys are saying, then I'm always waiting for an opportunity to prove you wrong. So who are you playing this game for? Is this a game of one-upmanship? Or is this a game of all the three of us coming together to make it work? Yeah. And the so the even before any of these days, the fundamental foundation is the intent with which you're approaching the partnership? Is the intent for the larger win of the organization? Or is the intent to say, hey, you know, I'm a better partner than you, or I'm a better professional player than you, or then it always becomes about one up action. Then it always becomes about conflict, which is not ideological, which is not an idea, but on each other. Then it becomes personal conflict, yes. which is poisonous. So I think one of the other things is individually, as business partners, we're constantly working on ourselves. Yeah. Uh, there is constant work on our, our inner game, our spiritual quotient, our emotional intelligence. Because if you are not working on yourself, then what ends up happening is you become an insecure human being. And only an insecure human being engages in this one-upmanship or I need to win or I need to uh, show prove myself, myself or yeah. prove myself yeah. uh, and stuff like that. So I think uh, an individual's value system is what reflects out in a partnership. Uh, and the blessing that each one of us have is that individually our values are, are common in terms of being respectful, caring for each other or caring for people in general. So it's not just towards each other, it's, it's, it's about our team, it's about whoever we work with. So I think those foundational personal values make a big difference to what you bring forth to a partnership. I mean you can't be a person who's insecure or who's looking at being the hero at all points of time um, and then make it work as an effective partnership. A partnership is only going to amplify who you are. Absolutely. So if you have too many conflicts, if you have emotional challenges and issues coming up, it's an amplification of who you are. It's not really the partner. The partner is only a medium of challenging you and bringing on your true self. So for a lot of people, it's actually about looking within and asking what's my baseline intent in this partnership. Is it about me winning? Is it about me being the best? Or is it about the larger goal? Uh, is it about me getting the limelight? Or is it about, say, us working together? That baseline intent is what actually shows up in every single area. That's yeah, the way so I see Something it. for me to add over here, and I mean, just to be fair, uh, I think we've created that equation for us because We've seen these things happening in our own ecosystem. I mean, uh, we have gone through iterations with multiple different people who, you know, we saw as potential partners for us to reach the stage of the three of us 
you know, having that equilibrium, the way I call it. And equilibrium is not about equality, it's about finding the right balance so the three of us are, you know, contribute to the table. Yeah. We've seen equations in the past where the partnership becomes about what is what is in it for me? Yeah. Or what am I doing which will give me my recognition? Exactly what I, I know, said. I, and, and yeah, and, and I just want to say it so that you know you you all of you understand that it, it's not a theoretical exercise, it's not an ideal picture. To get to this equation, we've gone through I would say 14 years of washing in the washing machine and actually getting all the cleansing out to really find out what's the right equation for us. So and, uh, we open to doing that. Just to give you a perspective, there was a time in our lives, right, very, very initial stages when we started doing business, we had nine partners. Suppose it not one or two. Don't talk about it. <laughs> These are things not to be done. So so we've experienced all kinds of all kinds of things that can go right, can go wrong in a partnership and that's how we've arrived here and that what that's why I think we've now kind of figured out what are the best practices of working in a partnership relationship, working in a partnership business and let me tell you this, if there's one force that can that can create an organization that can create a legacy, imagine what happens if you have two forces, imagine what happens if you have three forces, that can only create magic and that's how you got to look at it, that everyone's adding into the business which can amplify the business. And if you're trying to be the sole hero of the business, then you don't need partners. You're already the hero. So yeah, uh, I think I think we should close on that. Any closing comments, and then we go to Q and A. Yeah, yeah so there are a lot of questions. Right? So let's go to Q and A. Okay. So okay, number that just to clarify, the four Ds is discuss, debate, decide, and then disagree and commit. Yeah. And yeah, those are the four Ds. Okay. So I'm gonna pull yeah, up questions. Yeah, reading. Yeah, just reading. So don't worry about that. Uh, Deepak Baradia, how does it change when you have an inactive but financial partner? I'm going to take that one. Go for it. So I tell you what, Deepak, when you are borrowing money or when you are making someone invest in your business, uh, the time when you are making them invest, the cost of that capital is very, very high. In your head, that, that capital is very, very uh, valuable that they are bringing in. But over a period of time, as you start putting in the work and as you start growing, if you're feeling that this person is getting the reward just for free or without doing anything, then please understand that you made the fundamental mistake in the equation that you set in the process. And I see a lot of people go through this emotion because what happens is that at the time of borrowing money from someone or making someone invest, they, have, they give a huge amount of equity to that individual because they're not able to get that money. Okay? Now you either reconcile and say, this is the word I gave this person and I'm going to stick to this commitment and I'm never going to entertain this thought in my head saying that okay, I am the one who's working but he's getting the rewards. He's getting the rewards because you committed those rewards to that person and you committed those rewards to that person at a moment or time where, that, that, where nobody else was willing to trust you. So just look at it as you're paying back that person for the trust they invested in you, not just the money they invested in you. Uh, the human brain can, can spiral out in any direction. Having said that, this is for people who are going to take investments in the future. Whenever you are taking investments in your business from a passive financial partner, you need to always evaluate the, the joy and satisfaction you will have in repaying when you are working hard and that person is getting a passive income. If you get into this trap of feeling uncomfortable about it, ask yourself what would be your completely no guilt, no, uh, what should I say, uh, no regret percentage which means for the rest of your life even when you make millions what would be a no regret percentage that you will be willing to give away to that person though they've invested with you just one time so Deepak your question indicates to me that probably you feel that the equation is not uh, fair enough so I would suggest go back to that financial investor and buy a part of that equity out oh, yeah. okay yeah. buy it out say that okay I'm willing to pay you a premium I'm willing to pay you one time instead of paying you a lifetime on this equation uh, give me the opportunity to buy it back at a good profit for that person so that you feel and you live guilt free. I hope that helps uh, Deepak. That really set you free. Yeah. Uh, let's look at the next question. There's another question I'd like to take that. Asim is asking this question of how is the job role defined or responsibility shared? Okay. What if someone gets an easy responsibility and other gets a harder job? Does it create problems in the long run? Okay. Fundamentally, let's look at this. <laughs> if you have multiple business partners, you got to look at it from two perspectives. The first perspective is what is the business need? If the business requires multiple functions, then who among the business partners are handling the responsibility of individual functions? And let me take an example of, of us, right? So 
uh, current takes care of operations completely. He heads the entire coaching team, one of the largest coaching teams in, in Asia, and he does that phenomenally well. Rajiv is the face of the brand. He's the one speaking up on stage. He's the one spending his time day in and day out training his vocal cords. And I take care of the entire marketing of the entire business, marketing and sales. So I build the brand Rajiv, I build the brand Karan and Sita. So it's, it's very, very distinct roles, very distinct responsibilities. And complementary. And complementary, yeah, that's more important. And we work with each other, decide with each other, but the end responsibility of the function lies with each of us. Let's say marketing's end responsibility lies with me, operations end responsibility lies with Karan. And so that's one of what does the organization need. Secondly, what is the skill that we have as partners? If we have a skill that is inherent to us, which is say I have a skill of selling, I have a skill of marketing, then that's the function that I by default take. And if Rajin has a skill of speaking on stage, being able to create content, create value, then that's the skill that he takes. So that's how you decide on roles and responsibilities. I think that? another thing to add, Asim, is that your question reflects when you ask something like what if someone gets an easy responsibility yeah. and someone gets a harder job? In all honesty, if you give roles based on strengths, it's equally easy and equally hard for that individual yeah. in that role. Uh, so it just feels like right now in your business there is one particular role that nobody wants to take yeah. and that has been dumped on probably you and that's why you are asking this question that okay, I remember when initially I started I had business partners and nobody wanted to sell. So I always looked at it as okay I'm the one who's selling so I have the harder job but in all honesty, when you align roles based on capabilities and requirement of the organization, then it's equally easy and equally hard. You can't compare it. There. Would yeah. it be fair to say that I find what you do hard and you find what I do hard? I think that's the ideal yeah, equation. Yeah, exactly. That's the ideal equation. That's why we call it complementary. Because because what's easy to me is not easy to him. Yeah. What's easy to him is not easy to me. You gotta, you, you gotta hate what the other partner uh -huh. does. Like if someone ever told me to do what Karan does, I like I quit the job. <laughs> so, yeah. so and you gotta love what you do. Yeah, you gotta love what so, you do. So so I tell you the, uh, the other. Uh, I think this might answer a lot of other questions also, but this is what leads to the other equation of accountability, wherein when that clarity, like how Pranav said, is there, when the strengths are complementary in nature, it gives you the ability to understand what these partners bring you on the table, what they are accountable for, and you having the permission to hold them accountable. When this disparity exists, which means that their clarity is not there, or people don't know what each other is bringing on the table, that's when you probably feel this way. Am I taking up the tougher job? And am I contributing more than the other because there's no accountability? So that relationship, that equation is important to have a mutual accountability system. Yeah. Oh yeah. And in, in, in each of your partner's role clarity, and which is the word that we like to use, which is what we teach business owners about having role clarity amongst themselves, what is also extremely important is their measurement metrics. So uh, between the three of us, I am measured on the effectiveness of the marketing function, which means I have an MIS with, which is evaluated periodically to be able to understand how effectively is marketing working. Same is the kind of measurement metrics that Karan has, which is, which is in alignment with his operations. So each of us have measurement metrics and each of us have hold each other accountable respectfully, hold each other accountable to achieve the larger goal of the organization and that's how it always is. Okay. So we're going to take the next one. Deepak Kashyap, partnership is everywhere, even with colleague. How to create such ecosystem where we can move out of a discussion without residual effect? Uh, that. Okay, so uh, moving out of a discussion without residual effect, I'm going to go back to what Pranav said earlier as the premise, premise because it, it, it's based on the kind of culture, the equation you have as three partners. So I'm going to give you some, some, some steps. First of all, for you to be in that equation where you can move out with a, with a residual effect, it is important that all three partners have complementary skills. That's the baseline. I've already discussed this, so I won't share that again. Secondly, there needs to be clarity on what are those complementary skills so that people are not confused about what each person is bringing on the table. Third, you need to have an equation of accountability. I mentioned this earlier, but I'm going to go a little deep into that because to make sure there's no residual effect, I think as partners, we need to give each other the permission to hold each other accountable, knowing that it's with a good intention for the organization. And for that, like Prana said earlier, the goals, the metrics need to be clearly defined. And then you need to exercise the accountability. And to exercise the accountability, the question you want to ask yourself is this, do I have the permission to willingly, without any hesitation, question or challenge the other partner on their contribution, knowing that the other person will not take it in the wrong way, knowing that they will not get offended. Now once that equation is settled between your partners, 
then accountability becomes the most easiest thing and the most obvious thing. But I don't have to think about what Raji or Pranam have to think if I question them. Once an equation is set, there's no residual effect because we know for a fact that the questioning and the challenging and the accountability is on the task and not on the person. It doesn't change our equation. What do you say? Yeah, I think there's another important point which I think kind of adds value to the entire discussion that we're having is between the three of us, and you can always create this kind of an equation. Between the three of us, we have pro our professional relationships always take priority versus our personal relationships. And let me let me state this out very very clearly: the three of us are the best of friends. I don't think each of us have any better friend, if there is a word like that, than the three of us. Yes, so, yes. Hey, yes. No, no, no. I know, I know for a fact that I know for a fact that he treats me like his wife. <laughs> Like I have a lot of friends, but yeah, yeah. but still. <laughs> no, but I can say this on behalf of all the three of us. I don't think we have any friends who are closer to us than the three of us. Having said that, for us, our professional relationships as business partners, as partners of Quantum Leap Learning Solutions, takes precedence over everything else. Now, we intrude into each other's personal lives. We know each other's personal lives. We go on a holiday every single year with the entire, like each of us with our respective spouses. We do that, but for us, our professional relationship as business partners takes precedence over anything else. Which means we are willing to challenge each other, absolutely, when it comes to anything to do with the business. There's no holding back there. And I think it's a process. Uh, for those of you watching this, please understand that this has taken years. Yeah, yeah. It has taken years of conversation. It's not like we fell from the sky and we were made for each other. And we were not college friends. Just yes. Everyone yeah. asked us that. Yeah. We, were, we were never friends before business. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take the next one, that's Rajan. When there is no common decision because of no agreement, how do you resolve? Well, Raj, I'm, I'm kind of going to empathize with a lot more of you there. Here we are three of us, so what ends up happening is when we go into a vote, that there's two is to one, right? But I know for a fact that for a lot of people, uh, it's a two people partnership and then there is a disagreement, then how do you decide? So I'll give you the premise of my other business which is along with my wife. Um, uh, so in that business, both of us are business partners, um, so she is a family member, it works uh, because there are complementary skills and capabilities and when there is a disagreement or a decision, then we look at under whose department does that decision fall. Okay? Uh, and when we look at under whose department that decision falls, let's just say she handles operations and there I handle the marketing piece, then what happens is if it's a marketing related decision, and if I have a point of view on it, because my skills are better, then I will consider the flaws she is pointing out in my decision and I will give her a plan of how I am going to protect those flaws or we will agree that this is the risk we are taking and we will go with the decision of the person whose domain that decision falls under. So if you are two people uh, in a partnership and there is a decision that you are hitting a roadblock with, then you got to just surrender to the person who is going to be the driver of that decision uh, knowing and letting that person know what the gaps the other person sees and this person should listen to those gaps not from a point of view of defensiveness but openness to see how can I make my plan or approach more foolproof so uh, Rajan that's that's going to be a quick recommendation so I don't and this is not a hierarchy I just want to make yeah. it clear it's not a veto it depends on whose department falls under yeah. yeah who has more experience more data more skill in that yeah. Yeah. let's go to the next one Rakesh Patnak among partners, there is one or two alpha or dominant than the others. How do I empower the less speaking or silent partners to contribute more? Can you want to take that or? I think fundamentally it's the relationship that if, if you're asking this question, then I think fundamentally there's something not established no, in no, the I, relationship. I, I think it's a personality thing. Yeah, it's a personality thing. Uh, so here's how I would uh, look at that. Um, so most us is most dominant. I think. I'm pretty fixated, right? So no, not I mean, I don't know. I feel I'm very fixated. <laughs> so each one of us feel we are pretty fixated. I, I definitely feel he's not fixated. Yeah. yeah. He's not like yeah. But uh, I would say the way people are, or uh, rather the way to do this is every person should, while they're playing to the strength of their personality, also should explore the shadow of their personality. Which means, I tell you, there is a conscious shift. Please tell me if you notice this conscious shift in me. Okay, I've never asked you guys this question. But say for example, for this year, one of the things I decided to take on is more empathy. Okay, um, and what does that mean? I'm usually very passionate about my ideas and my points of views. Okay, so I sometimes with the passion portion borderline enforce my ideas and points of views. So 
Oh, see, he's nodding his head. He's, he feels. I know. I, I know that about okay. it. Okay. So now, what has happened is I have lived in the style of being overtly passionate about my ideas or points of views. So I have got an affair that he probably sometimes my passion becomes over passion and then over dominance. So one of the things I have consciously taken on is to explore my shadow. Now you guys need to validate and tell me before I start doing that since 2020. No, I, I think because now I ask more questions. Yeah, he definitely start doing that. Now I ask more questions. Like, okay, what do you guys think about it? Yeah. So I think it's about personal awareness. See, I bring it back to uh, individual uh, awareness and individual values and individual virtues and individual intent. Because at the end of the day, it's individuals that come together and create a mix of the partnership. So that personal awareness, I would say, but having is, said that, I is have very, very very different dimensions which can help in your situation. Uh, as a as as a partnership equation, it's it's very important for people to play different roles in that kind of a conversation. But someone's always playing facilitator or moderator. I, I know I, I personally do that a lot. I feel it's a default thing which comes to me wherein to ensure everybody's contributing the point of view. You know you facilitate a conversation where if Rajiv is enforcing his or in that moment probably being passionate about it, you know, I will say, okay Rajiv, good that you're sharing, but now what do you have to say? Yeah, okay. And I'm not asking him what do you agree or not. I ask him what do you want to say? Yeah, okay, okay, what's your what's your opinion about that? And then I share what I feel about that. And then we facilitate the conversation so that everybody's ideas come out rather than us just debating that I am right or you are right. And to contextualize that to people who have just two partners, which means you and you you and another person is a business partner, what me and Bhakti do in return is that we bring in Karan yeah. or we bring in a Pranam. Which means we are saying if you are two partners, you need to have a third person who could be a coach or a mentor whom you surrender to, whose intent you trust, who you know is not biased or inclined to one or the other person but really wants the best to be brought out from you. So for those of you who are two partners, question is who is your facilitator, who is your coach, who is your moderator? Who's Everybody needs to express yeah. It's, it's yeah. important. And, and Rakesh, I think the first step that you should do is to have a conversation with your partner about this disagreement that exists in the relationship. If it doesn't work, then probably bring a facilitator. And also be aware of each other's styles. Talk about what's your style, what's my style. Exactly. Okay, how passive are you? How active is each person or how aggressive is each person? You need to have conversations about these elements yep. to kind of establish that understanding that hey, we all understand and we know each other and we have this permission to kind of bring to each other's awareness when we are going overboard and when we are not. So it's a lot of conversation. Essentially eliminate assumptions. Yeah. Eliminate assumptions about each other which create filters of judgment. Which, which which filter the entire conversation that you have with the other person. So if you are a partnership, if you are in a partnership, if you are two partners, then you should be talking about everything about each other. Yeah. Right? Without let's, any filters. Let's jump to the next one. Shitwa Anand Patil says, what happens when there are two partners? We, we just answered answer yeah. that. Uh, uh, Nerella says, okay, Namrata, okay, I'm gonna go scroll down to the questions. Okay. Uh, let's answer that one. Uh, Arindam's question. Partnership deed has problems, legally not very secure, better to go for private Let me answer that Arindam. If you are not aligned, whether you are a partnership deed or a legal agreement, if the intent is wrong for people, they will mess with you in a private limited. Yeah. So I think that's a very hollow perspective about legalities because guess what? If you have partnered with someone who does not have the right intent, life is hell anyways. So we are not even going into that. Uh, Murli's conversation uh, question, what if you are already in partnership and your partner is disrespectful and has personal prejudice, do you suggest to break and move on? Have a conversation first. Yeah, so I would say, I would say this Murli and this is for everybody who feels a lack of alignment. Okay, see there is a difference between agreement and alignment. Agreement is situational, agreement is on ideas, agreement is on different aspects of the business. It's okay to have lack of agreement. What is not okay to have is lack of alignment. And alignment in what? Alignment towards goals, alignment in your values. Uh, if you do not have alignment in your vision towards a business and your values towards a business, then definitely look at having a conversation and see if you can create an alignment. But if you see that that alignment is not real, it's not going to work, it keeps relapsing and people keep going back uh, on what has been agreed upon, then I feel it's better to not have a partner and part ways. 
than to be in a toxic relationship. Both parties will be happier. Both parties will be more productive. Honestly. And and in all honesty, if the 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 situation comes down to parting ways, I think the easiest thing to do is to be the giver and walk away. Uh, because if both start talking about this is mine, that is mine, then then your focus and attention becomes about that, and you use you lose a lot of uh, time, energy, and you build a lot of negativity and uh, bitterness around people. Uh, I have a simple philosophy: if the partnership is not working, just give every leave everything behind and start fresh. Because you kind of back yourself on your abilities. That say I can start from scratch and still rebuild stuff. Uh, it's yeah, that, that's yeah. so much more peaceful, so much more effective than trying to resolve what's not working. Yeah, yeah. So I hope that helps, Rolly. Really. Uh, Ravi Raj also, I think it's pretty much on the same lines. What do you do when priority of the partner changes and business suffers? It's about alignment again. Yeah. So Ravi Raj, I think you need to bring it to the awareness of that partner and check that alignment. And if the alignment is not there, it's okay to part ways. Pradeep Kumar, hi Pranav. Why you chosen Raji to build a brand? Why not Karan? What special you see in Raji? And also tell me how you crack. The first day, but yeah, we, 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 uh, I like uh, the question. It seems, it, it seems like you're a lawyer who's trying to create conflict. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Go for it. Let me answer that question. So there were two ways how we made the decision of why we chose Rajiv as the brand which we wanted, we wanted to build first, and then Karan as the next brand. Two reasons. One is. If I build Karan as a brand, then someone has to take care of the entire back end, and I can't trust Rajiv to do that because that's not his skill. But if I build Rajiv as a brand, then I can trust for Karan, trust in my sleep that he can take care of the entire operation of the entire business. Which is why we chose Rajiv as the brand to go on. And let me also tell you the decision behind now building Karan as a brand because now we have an operations team that has a set of leaders wherein the team is functioning without the presence of Karan, without complete involvement of Karan. Which means Karan's bandwidth is free and available, and that's why we built Karan's brand. And it's got nothing to do with Karan's a less of a speaker than Rajiv, or Rajiv is a better speaker than Karan. Nothing of that. They're they're two different speakers, and they're both amazing at what they do. Very two different styles. Yeah, but it's just that Karan has the strength of operations and detail in which uh, Rajiv. So just to clarify one thing also. It wasn't Prana who decided it was all three. Exactly. And I had a say in it too. And I was like off your head and chucking him because it's clear that we need to move in that direction. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and I think this is where I give you credit to all three of us that we've always made decisions based on what's best for the business uh, and not what we would like. Yeah. Okay. And, and I'll tell you, we've had uncomfortable situations. We've had family sometimes wondering why him, why not you. Those kind of things come in because it's important to talk about. Your family sometimes asks you, your partner is doing this. Why are you not doing this? Why are you not doing that? But I think what I pride the three of us on is that we are always even telling our families that hey, it's about what's necessary, what's important, not what you would like. And this is something that a lot of partners need to handle. Okay, that you need to know how do you how do you really keep the mission first. That's very very critical. Yeah. Let's pull out the next question. Uh, there's a question about working in a job. Okay, Manish, what? Yeah, we will go this. Uh, Manish Shubhad, yeah, my business partner is working in a job, and I am full time in the business. He's unable to give time as expected. I always feel problems in dealing with it. Uh, at the same time, he doesn't feel urgencies. How should I tackle it? Should I? Do I do? Okay. Okay. So, Manish, firstly, why are you business partners? Okay, uh, that's the first direct question I have. No, why are you equal business partners? Okay. Uh, yeah, if yeah, you're equal, if business, you're partners, equal business partners, why are you equal business partners? Secondly, uh, it it feels like you're carrying someone along with you, so you better have a good reason. I'm not saying it's wrong. You better have a good reason. Probably this guy has invented the product, and you're just going out there and building a business. Okay, so. Uh, you really need to firstly answer why are you business partners because it seems that like one person's full time, the other person's part time, uh, so it's not a proportionate contribution. So if the returns or the equities is in this is is equal for a disproportionate contribution, that's when it starts hurting. Secondly, is it if if you guys are serious about the business, you can't have one partner in limbo. Okay, you can't have one partner saying that okay, but I'm going to be in a full time job. Now, if he has a circumstance or a family challenge, says saying that he's not able to take the risk. Of jumping in full time into the business because the income can be inconsistent, but a job gives him a secured income. Then the question to ask is, what about you? Yeah. Uh, does he give you a part of the fixed income that he generates from his job? If he doesn't, please make him watch this video. 
because I would, in all honesty, question your partnership equation itself. Yeah. Uh, you better have a good explanation for why you guys have worked out this equation. Probably drop us a message and then Stop. Now, in this case, in this case, just to complete the uh, complete the conversation that Rajiv is having to complete the solution, it also boils down to what is the value that the partner is bringing onto the table. If he's invested money into the business, which means he has added financial value to the business, then there is a certain amount of value that he's bringing, which you're probably not bringing because you have invested money into the business, but you're investing time into the business, which he's not investing, which is again a fair equation. Yeah. So it really depends on what's the value that is that's being brought onto the table. Yeah, uh, Ajay, if one partner has improved so much and the other one has neither, he's giving time to business as said, I value family than money. This uh, this, uh, what to do then? Clearly, you're not aligned. Yeah. Ajay, clearly you're not aligned because now what's happened? See, I tell you, uh, are there times when um, one, par so one person is in form and the other is out of form? Absolutely. Are there times when one person is stretching and doing more and the other is not that stretched? Absolutely. But that doesn't trouble us, okay, between the three of us. That doesn't trouble us. It troubles only when, only when you are not aligned in your values. Okay, like there are times clearly there's a phase of life where say Karan said, I need to take a back seat now. I need, I need yeah, to Can I share my personal experience? Yeah. Like you know, I, I had a baby last year. My baby is eight months old. And there was a time when obviously you understand when it's your first baby, you need to uh, I for me it was a stretch for some time over there because I had to overdo it based on my commitment. Then I told these guys I need to take a vaccine because I'm not going to travel and our work involves a lot of travel because I need to be there for my wife and I need to be there for my child. It's the initial days. And I think for three, four months in, in, in our yeah. work, I didn't travel. And that's a big deal for us, not traveling yeah. for three, four months. And there was never a form. I just I'm doing this guys and they all said, Yeah, go for it. Because the situation so, is never there. So when you're aligned, you also back each other up. Like not just not just in terms of family emergencies or family situations. But also when your form is not right, like Rajiv was saying, there are a lot of times when I was not the best that I could be, there were a lot of times that Rajiv was not the best that he could be, but we all knew that with consistent feedback, holding each other accountable, helping each other grow, we can always up our game and that's how we preach where we preach. So what you want to understand is if the intent is there and the alignment is there, yeah. you don't measure these things. Yeah. But if you're measuring these things, then, then that's an indication that somewhere there's a lack of alignment and lack of intent that you're seeing. So question that alignment, question that intent and try fixing it. And if it's not fixing, then fly away. So which means the question you're asking for yourself is this, just so that you have a thought process. Do you have the confidence of the other person's intention where you are willing to do that for them because you know they do the same for you? And I, like I love that thing that he said. I think this is where I'd like to define trust. Trust is having the confidence yep. in each other's intention, action and effort. If you do not have the confidence in your business partner's intention, actions and effort, then you really need to go out there and question it and create a trust. Yeah. Put each other through the test to be able to say, now I trust you. Uh, and people who are willing to go through the test are the ones who can be trusted. But yeah. we have to make it personal and say, how can you question me? This is my company also. You idiot, you're not contributing. You Then you contribute like it's your company, no? Yeah. So you got to really have that permission. So I feel a great partnership is a function of two T's. Yeah, that point. Uh, Four D's, okay. two T's. <laughs> Test and trust, yeah. which means we are constantly testing each other. And because we are willing to be tested, we trust each other. So, so yeah, that's the key word, willing to be tested. I'm going to add another dimension to this. Are you willing to be vulnerable with your partners? Which means, uh, metaphorically, yeah, are you willing to strip yourself? Are you willing to be to expose every single weakness for you, knowing that your partners will not take advantage of that? And they won't judge you for it. And they won't When you do that, that's called a partnership. And the foundation of that again is trust. And we, uh, to talk about ourselves, not like when we started, we trusted each other 100%. Obviously not, right? And I don't think anybody does that in the beginning of a relationship. But then it happened over a period of time. And to take on from what you're saying, it happened over a period of time because of three C's. Conversations, <laughs> conversations, conflict, and commitment to each other. Absolutely. So I think this and is easy for And you yeah. yeah. care as well. <laughs> You see, we love to have fun with what we do and we're willing to play off each other. That's the key. Yeah. The problem we see with a lot of people is that they're too bloody serious at work and that's why they're seriously judging everything that the other person is doing and measuring it against everything that they are doing. That's so boring. I mean, why are you partners then? You want to just learn how to let loose, cut loose, have fun, give each other.
each other what what each other wants in terms of responsibility, roles, and strengths, and do what it takes. That's the way you and, play and, the game. And I think ultimately, at the end of the day, if you are not having fun in the partnership, it's not worth being in. Yeah, it's we, not worth yeah, being in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're going to condo, if we part ways, what will happen then? Then guess what? That's that's really really scary. Okay. Uh, let me do some questions. Or did I go to? Hi. Okay. Uh, Okay, for all the people who ask questions, thank you so much on that. And please note that every single one of your questions, right now my team is working very, very hard on taking printouts so that we can have access to them. Not just to be able to answer now, because we're going to be running out of time in about 10 minutes from now, but we'll also create a lot of content on these questions, which, which, which obviously will help a lot more entrepreneurs, not just you, but a lot more entrepreneurs out there. Questions go. Okay. Uh, how do you handle. Down? No, down. Okay. Sorry guys. Kind of played too much with the mouse. Yeah. Okay, we'll start from here. Okay, Shay Duderia's question. What to do when your partner promised to work equally but doesn't work at all after the company promise? I think just to say, guys, I have an idea. What if you all brought your partners to our business space program? <laughs> Come with your partner. I promise you, these guys are laughing because I'm selling, because I'm addicted to selling. But I'm telling you, genuinely come to our program with your partners, you walk out a line. Because what's the point of living this way, lack of alignment? Actually, there are two benefits to you coming to the business space program with your partners. Either they're aligned and you work out as two people, one body, one soul, or we facilitate this. We facilitate that. And good news is there are a lot of people in the base program like you, so you can form new partnerships. <laughs> based on complementary strengths and not based on the Foundation can Okay. Marilyn's question. What are, what are the watch outs when one is considering to form business partnerships with family members? How about with good friends? In case of disagreements, how do you decide which relationship to provide, prioritize or preserve? Oh. Well, Marilyn, I think we, we gave it right yeah, at the beginning. Yeah. You have All to have right. complementary skills and strengths. Okay. My wife is my business partner, but she's my business partner not because she's my wife. But because we have complementary skills that can add value to that business. So Madeline, that has to be the parameter. And uh, how do you prioritize the relationship when you are in business? It's a very simple thing. When we are talking work, then it is looking at each other as business partners and holding each other responsible. And not taking a recipe back home saying, how could you ask me this question? I think the, 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 the red flag for any partnership is if anybody ever brings up how could you say this to me or how could you ask me this you got to be willing to say anything to each other and be willing to answer any question that is asked from but you. with respect with respect yeah, okay, yeah. That's and, and to just add to what Rajiv is saying when you are family members and business partners you're wearing two different hats so always ask each other what hat are you wearing right now in the conversation that we're having are you wearing the hat of a family member or are you wearing the hat of a business partner so accordingly you have the conversation so that that makes life easy Okay, next question, BNS Verma. Do you think all partners should have different capabilities if two persons have the same expertise but different opinion? That's uh -huh. where it becomes competitive. Yeah. That's where it becomes me versus you. That's where it becomes an ego battle of who's better. Yeah. So that's why it's not recommended to have the same capabilities. So another point is what's the point of having two partners with the same capability? Yeah. What? It needs to be distinct because what's the difference then? There's no value of the partnership. Yeah. So, Gurpreet Chawla, how to give weightage to areas of work being handled by partners? Usually the partner involved in money making activities is considered superior. I think that's a very hollow yeah. perspective, yeah. Gurpreet. Uh, because in all honesty, uh, it, it really depends on the... I, I prefer structuring partnerships as equal. Okay, uh, Knowing that the contribution is going to be equal and the requirement is also equal. But if someone has to say, for example, yeah, obviously, if I have to make a business partner just because the person is going to handle finances of the business, then I would attribute that as 8 to 10%. We've seen of, that all. Oh, yeah, we've yeah. seen people saying, I don't understand accounts and finance, so I made him my 50 50 partner. I'm like, dude, what are you smoking? Okay, because you, you, yeah. you can get an accountant. Yeah, you, and you don't have to give up your equity. Yeah, you don't have to give up your equity to an accountant. So, this is where I think uh, people need to hold partnerships or rather partners need to hold core business responsibilities. What are core business responsibilities? Marketing, sales, management, operations. Yeah. According to me, these are core business responsibilities. And I don't mean some yeah. cases in some businesses. Yeah, but I, I, I would say that you, it becomes disproportionate if he's the partner who's handling marketing, sales, operations, and I'm doing HR and finance. Right? 
if they do not have the time for the multiple roles and if they do not have the skills for multiple roles. Now let's assume that you have a team member who has the time and the skills and that's why you've given them multitasking roles. And then you have two partners who are delegating to the same team member two different tasks and that person is now strategizing whom do I listen to? Do I listen to him or do I listen to the other guy? Now in such a case, in such a case, you got to give your team member the permission to say, hey, listen, I received X instruction from Pranam and I'm receiving Y instruction from Rajiv and both are coming in with a certain level of urgency which seems to be clashing. What should I do? Now in such a scenario, it's the onus on us to kind of figure out and say, hey, you know what, go for Pranav said, because that's a higher priority right now, keep what I said as second priority. So the onus is on us, because you can't confuse that team member and expect that team member to decide, uh, because then one will attack that person and the other will appreciate that person. You don't want the team member to face that. And, and, and at the same time, I, I at least personally, I'm a big fan of, uh, of a team member being led by one, pe one person instead of being led by multiple people. Yes. That only causes chaos, confusion, and lack of clarity in the team members. And which, torture. Yeah. And torture. A lot of torture. Which yeah. Because means, he has to deal with two big egos now. Yeah. Which means, here's what can be done. Say, for example, we know for a fact that Pawan reports to Pranav. Now, if I have to give any work to Pawan, I will route that through Pranav. Yeah. Saying that, Pranav, I have this for Pawan. Yeah. Can you make sure that he gets this done? Then Pranav will tell me, hey, no, he's already working on this. Then between both of us, we have to sort it out whether what I am saying is Friday or what he's saying is Friday. Agree on it and then give Pawan instruction. So it's only Pranav's voice that Pawan is hearing. Yeah, so we're shielding Pawan from all the conflict, con conflicts, confusions, everything that's happening. Yeah. Your ego is not that problem. This yeah. 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 Cool. So I hope that makes sense, Lavanya. Uh, we're we running out of time. Okay. Actually, it's 5 p.m. We're going to take one last question. Oh, I like this question. When is the busy breakthrough seminar? Busy breakthrough. Firstly, it's the business breakthrough seminar. I actually get my team in the busy breakthrough seminar. I get my team to reply to the comment with the list of all the business breakthrough seminars we have lined up in in, in the in the cities that we have lined up over the next four months. So let's 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 take that uh, last one. Mira, equal hours, equal contribution, equal reaping benefits. How to go about playing with justice? Well, let me tell you what fairness and justice is. Fairness and justice is treating each person differently, not equally. Yeah, yeah. What does that mean? That it has to be weighed in proportion of responsibility and contribution, not just, uh, okay, let's do it equal. Fairness and justice is that. So, yeah. so it's, I'm okay with you doing it equal, but justify why it's equal. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's always a contribution of, it's always a function of contribution. Okay, so uh, I think with that, we are going to close this one. Guys, if you found this Facebook Live valuable, then we are going to post this on my timeline and share it on current timeline as well. We request you to share it on your timeline because at the end of the day, I think this is a burning issue for a lot of entrepreneurs who are business partners. So do us a favor by helping more people by sharing this information. And if you found this useful, then tell us in the comments below what did you learn, what did you take away. For those of you whose questions we did not answer, uh, our marketing team will capture all these questions and we'll do more videos around these questions uh, in the future. So don't be disheartened. Uh, and if you have a burning issue, burning problem, feel free to drop in a personal message on Facebook uh, or Instagram or on LinkedIn and we will uh, revert to that. And lastly but not the least, we truly believe you need to come to the Business Pay Pace program. So find out where it is, tell us which city you are in, we'll tell you the dates, come to the business space program because we truly believe that that's a game changing program for any entrepreneur. If you have a business partner, just come along with them. So with that. And, and, and to also add to all the people who asked a lot of questions, because I, can, I can see a lot of questions which because of lack of time we weren't able to answer. I would say follow Rajiv's page, follow Karan's page on Facebook, on Insta, on LinkedIn, and more importantly, turn on notifications. Yeah. Because you may miss a lot of videos and that's the video that can really change your life. When you miss it, there's nothing more dangerous than that. So turn on notifications. So he spoke like a true marketing guy. Absolutely. He's giving you the right recommendation. Complimentary friends. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you follow this. Thank you so much guys. Thank Make you sure guys. you type out your lessons in the uh, in the comment section. Thank you. Thank Have you. Have fun. Happy partnerships. Okay. See you.